I'm just going to get started. What I'd like to do is uh, talk for maybe half an hour. I really want to hear what you have to say. Um, hi, Claudia. <laughs> so thank you for coming. And I know many of you worked on the Spyro this summer, so it's good to see you here. And what I'd like to talk about today is, um, is basically how the Spyro got built, as well as some ideas that I have about development in Orange, and, um, and lastly, how that relates to Dr. Martin Luther King legacy. And I also like to talk about two main hurdles to development as I see it in town, and many of you who participate in redevelopment efforts probably know these. So we'll go over them and, and maybe flesh them out a little bit. So uh, to start, many of you perhaps are familiar with the Forgiveness Spiral. It's a large public installation, like an art installation that's now going up in Butterfield Park. Uh, it's almost done. Uh, it started, uh, the spiral's meant to be a walking path, like a labyrinth, and meant for contemplation. Uh, it's based on the golden spiral, which is a mathematical reflection of infinity. So the curve itself uh, is yours proportionally wider at every turn, um, and theoretically it can you know, help us encompass the whole planet. So mathematically it's the shape of infinity. And the way the project began, um, in 2013, Hands Across North Quabbin, which many of you know of, is a civic organization, a local civic organization. At that time, Mark Scholl was the director, and he initiated a project calling for public artwork. Um, and this <coughs> was in conjunction with a series of talks that went on at the Congo Church around Martin Luther King and the idea of forgiveness. And I had already been thinking about that. Um, I was thinking at in terms of kind of development, also spirals and forgiveness. I was like juggling all these things in the air. And so I submitted, um, I submitted a plan for the art project, and that was chosen. That was the one that was chosen. Um, that was in 2013, but there wasn't any money for the project. <laughs> um, so typically in Orange, and um, there was no place for it. Uh, so I kind of I looked for funding, and then the town of Orange uh, was redoing the park, and they held the contest for public artwork, mm -hmm. and I submitted once again. This was at the end, going into 2014. Uh, is it seven o'clock now? Did I start early? Oh, yes. <laughs> so I, and I submitted, and, and this project um, once again was chosen. At this point, there was a little bit of money. There was four thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, but again, there was no site for it. Hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, Mark, you missed it. We're missing you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> That's the only important thing. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so if you want to click the slide. Um, so I'm going to get, with, like I said, it's based on the Fibonacci sequence or the golden spiral, which is this uh, figure that goes wider and wider. And many, um, many things in nature follow that pattern. So hurricanes and shells and that. Uh, you could do that again. <coughs> oh, one more. So I don't even know what's on here. Like, I, I, Before you arrived, I had um, seven hours of slides that just collapsed. So this is my quick and dirty version of what I had, um, which w would have been beautiful. Um, but in any case, this is beautiful too. Um, so again, a lot of these, um, these patterns are found in nature. So I was looking for something um, that would go sort of make that reference point. Um, okay, so uh, I guess one more slide. Beginning in 2014, um, yeah, and so, well, I guess there's no way to fix that. But anyways, this was the, the, the <coughs> saying of Martin Luther King that I wanted to focus on, which is forgiveness is not a, um, occasional. an occasional act, it's a per permanent attitude. Mm -hmm. See that? That's what I would say. Again, another spiral. Uh, beginning in 2014, a small group of us, um, hands, so it was uh, Reverend Black from the Mission Covenant Church, Mark Scholl, um, myself, and Kevin Kennedy, we went around and looked at the, the redeveloping park, and we tried to find a site for the spiral, and I think you could probably get one more slide in there. Oh, oh. there's another spiral, go one more. <laughs> oh, and another. <laughs> uh, okay, so maybe not. Um, in any case, so we, we went around the, um, there were three sites that were chosen mainly. I, I think you probably do one more. Nope. Okay. Okay, never mind. Uh, there's some slides that are missing, so go back a few. Thank you. Um, so 
Thank you, Manuel, by the way, for helping. Um, so uh, we, in this, there were three sites that were chosen in the park. The first was on the top of the hill, where it wound up being located um, eventually. Another one was in the sand pit across the road because the original site for the park was going to include like this whole area. It was going to have the other side of the road. It was going to go along the river. Uh, and the third site was in Wright Field. So we went back and forth uh, situating where the spiral would go. And I actually went to ComCom and I got approval. So I went through that whole process to make it next to the sand pit. And then we were in Wright Field and we were told, okay, fine. You know, we set it all up in Wright Field. And, and it, while we're out there, we're thinking, you know, there might, this might not be the best place for the spiral. We're thinking fly balls and things like that. Um, but eventually, it was decided that it would go on the top of the hill. So we took all our stuff and we went back up on the top of the hill. Um, th originally, there was going to be like a built-in playground up there, but they ran out of money. So we, we got of the spiral. Um, so, okay. Um, but in any case, that was in, that was like 2014, the summer of 2014. However, there was a stone structure up there, and there was also a flagpole, and those things had to be removed. So we waited another eight months for that to come down uh, before we could start building. So anyway, um, what I want to talk about a little bit was Dr. Martin Luther King um, and his idea of development and forgiveness. Um, so we know Dr. Martin Luther King because he is um, known for ending or, you know, working to end segregation on a national level. But when I think about Dr. Martin Luther King, it's often um, with sort of a wider aperture and maybe a, a longer lens looking at him historically. Because I don't think he thought of himself that way. He um, actually, um, many of the things that he um, worked towards had to do with the nature of decolonization um, of the whole world that was going on at that period. So. Um, you can go one more. There was another figure um, who was uh, prevalent around that period as well. His name was Dag Hammarskjöld. He was uh, the leader of the United Nations. He was the Secretary General. He was also assassinated. Um, I, I don't. Actually, you can kind of read that. Um, so, um, and he was at, at the time he was attempting to mediate a conflict um, in the Belgian Congo, and his. His claim went down, you know? No. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, at the time he was uh, translating these words of this Jewish scholar, uh, Martin Berber, who wrote, the only reply to distrust is candor. candor. Um, and he was reflecting on this three-part meditation on forgiveness. And the idea is that you first, when you need to forgive, you first have to forgive yourself, then you forgive the other person who's offended you, and then you forgive the whole world. And this is a meditation um, that he was thinking about when his plane went down. So when I was thinking of the spiral, I was thinking of sort of that, you know, you, in the center is yourself, and then there's other people, and then it radiates out to the whole world. Um, anyways, okay, so you can go one more. Oh, and here, uh, it really was part of a much larger struggle. So here are just some of the assassinations that took place during mm -hmm. like a 50 year period. So Martin Luther King was kind of at the tail end of that. And I think both Martin Luther King and Malcolm X knew themselves to be part of a larger prop, uh, a <coughs> larger struggle of decolonization, of getting rid of colonialism. Um, and I think probably the Secretary General as well said. So if I point like that. <laughs> Go. New slide. Thank you. So there's the original plans for the park. Wow, how gorgeous, huh? Um, so it would have been on both sides of the road. It would have gone across here. And originally, we had three sites inside of, um, on the other side of the park, which were going to be um, where the spiral went. And eventually, it wound up. And then we were situated here. Um, and then finally, we wound up on top here. So in 2015, uh, the we, we really didn't think that the spiral was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, around May, I got a call from Kevin Kennedy saying, guess what? The spiral's got to be built, and it's got to be built in July, by the, in the middle of July. And we were like, what? <laughs> but we got up there, and um, we did some I'm scoping out. Um, it, the first thing I did was I did a drawing, and then my trusty sidekick, Manuel, um, turned my drawing into a sort of plan. Um, and one more, 
slide. Thank you. Um, then we need to map it out on a grid. So I had some coordinates here, but I couldn't get them on the screen. So um, so we had to take the app and we had to make a grid, and then we mapped the spiral out on a grid, and then we spray painted the ground, and then we could begin digging, and that's what we did. We started digging. Uh, we had to go down about 18 to 24 inches because uh, we wanted to get below the frost line. Um, and um, we had a lot of rainstorms during that period. <laughs> we dug up with like kind of caved in on us. Uh, it was hard work. Whoops. And we kept hitting obstacles. That's all right. Here's an obstacle. Like huge obstacles. So when I think of the obstacles, and here's kind of the point of where I'm going with this talk, um, there's two main obstacles to this spiral. The first obstacle is obviously it was physical. It was just a lot of junk that we had to remove. But the second ob obstacle is kind of metaphysical, I guess. It had to do with um, what people were saying about the spiral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> lots of people were saying, really? yeah. Surprising in Orange, surprised. come on. Uh, so anyways, uh, I have a good friend, Brian, you know, who lives elsewhere now, but he has a favorite saying in this. Orange, no deed goes unpunished. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. So, um, so people were talking about the spiral and um, the places where rumors kind of spin. And this was the second hurdle that we faced. And what I think, what I call it is like the narrative of decline. Um, so it's um, got two facets to it. The first facet is um, that no project will ever be good enough to make up for how great Orange was in the past. Mm. You know, it's just, um, <laughs> you know, in that mythical place that Orange was, nothing can make up for that. And the second one is that newcomers and government people are, you know, taking over and they're, they're promoting their ideologies of forgiveness and things like that and undermining the town leading to the destruction of the town. <laughs> um, and I think that the, the people who make these narratives or participate in these don't realize that they're, they're actually contributing to the narrative of decline in a lot of ways, and they're also kind of draining energy from any positive things that get going in the town. So there were a bunch of misperceptions about the site. And what's next? Mm -hmm. uh, not a ticket. So uh, there were a bunch of misconceptions. The first was that we were spending taxpayer money on this, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which is not true. We got a little small part of the block grant, um, and it didn't even cover all the stuff. So um, the second thing was that we were outsiders with this ideology mm. of forgiveness or peace and love, um, when in actuality, this sort of stemmed from the, the hands narratives and the hand con hands conversations that were held prior to that. And um, the third thing were many of the comments uh, kind of centered around the idea that we were desecrating this sacred site, this sacred patriotic site. Mm -hmm. So um, first there were three misconceptions about that. The first was that um, that site on the top of the hill was used to raise and lower the flag for patriotic ceremonies. The second was that um, the hill itself in the town was old and, and sort of historically significant. And the third thing was that um, that base that was created there was really well crafted and, and valuable. Um, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit because I dug in every inch of that hill. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you there was not so much as a buffalo nickel in it. We kept looking to find something. We were digging. We kept thinking we would find something, but we did not. Um, so first of all, the stone base was falling apart and it was dangerous and it was kind of craggy and, and used rotten kind of material to make it. The second thing was the flag itself couldn't work because the mechanism was broke. So it was up on the hill and Josh couldn't get it up or down and he, you know, it was basically just kind of getting worn and torn and ragged up there. Um, and what's the third one? Uh, the third one is the site itself. In archaeology, we call the hill, the, the word for it is a trash mitten. Basically, it was a pile of fill that somebody plopped there probably 100 years ago, and, and basically because they wanted to get rid of it. So there was, it was layered, right? And the top layer was broken nip bottles, <laughs> some candy wrappers, and a couple of syringes. Mm. Beneath that was broken beer, crushed beer cans, some beer tabs. 
Beneath that was broken pottery and some old medicine bottles. So basically this was a pile of 100 years of people's addictions. That's what that site was. And even when I was up there, a couple of junkies came up to me and they weren't very threatening. They were just kind of like, hey man, what you doing? So they were just checking it out. And it was clear that this was their site on top of the hill. All right, so let's see what's next. Um, all right, so, yeah, <laughs> and you thought that guy didn't work. <laughs> yeah, um, so in the beginning, um, so, you know, I said, look, Kevin, we're going to, we're going to do it, but you can't just spring this on me. So he called the work day, and basically he showed up, Josh showed up, and I showed up, um, and we worked our tails off. Um, so Josh had a piece of, you know, earth mover equipment, and he dug out like probably half of the spiral. He didn't do one more. And Kevin got this stone dust, and man, he worked so hard that day he was drenched in sweat. So we were following behind the earth mover, and it would dig up the earth, and we would dig it up behind, and we'd put it in that really rotten wheelbarrow that we owned. And we'd move that aside, and then we'd fill this up with some stone dust, and then we'd dump that down. And there's no pictures of me working in any of these things, but take my word for it. I, I was there, and I wasn't just taking pictures. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> so after that, we got about half of it dug out, but we still had to dig out the rest. So we used a rototiller, and this, at this point, Manuel um, really did vanity lifting with this thing, and then I pulled the dirt out. Um, and that's how we got... Um, What's the best? Yeah, it works the best. Do you ever have to do it? Then we were ready to select the stone. So have you ever been to Goshen Stone? Goshen is like a, a Massachusetts treasure. It's just this place. And you can see, like, they, it's a small quarry out in Goshen, Mass. And um, they um, they take stuff off the mountain, just like in slabs that big. It's like as big as they, oh, yeah, sorry, that's what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, they come off like that. Straight and right. flat, just like, I don't want to get the same thing done, but just like a like the size of a building. And then they break it up into pieces that you can select. And the beauty of the stone is that, besides it being native stone, it's very flat. It breaks off the mountain really flat, and it's, um, you know, even thickness, about you know, three to four inches thick. It's very, very um, smooth, but at the same time it has a grip to it, so you don't slip when you're walking on it. Um, it's also made of mica schist, so if you look really closely at it, it just gleams. It's just gorgeous stuff. And it's got little pieces of garnet in it. And we could get sizes that were thir 36 inches wide, which wow. was wide enough to, um, oh God, you can get like five feet. You could get like the whole slab if you wanted. I don't know how you move it. Um, but um, we wanted it to be able to, a wheelchair to be able to access the spiral. So one more. Yes, and then we asked them to deliver it, and they had to go to the top of the mountain, and it was raining again. Uh, and uh, they brought these things up, stacked like that. Um, you can go one more. And they dumped them all off in the mud. And I have another slide here, which would have been on my great presentation that got lost, at how they managed to basically drop it in the right place, except for a little bit. It did kind of over, overshoot and hit some of the spirals. But, um, but basically... Oh, they did. No, but most of it just, like, just, just came together. down. It's, it's, the stuff is incredible. So, um, all right, next slide. So where am I in this? Uh-oh. Yeah, so the volunteers, like, so we got, well, you probably could go back one more, and then we'll go to this, because we, we got it all done, and this is about middle of June, and we were going to call our first work day, and we put it on Facebook, and we put it um, in the Apple Daily News, and then we sat back and we said, <laughs> Nobody's gonna come to this. <laughs> and I was thinking, like, what person in the right mind <laughs> wants to <laughs> so lift this? You know, it's really it's it's the size of a tabletop and it weighs about the size of you know that as much as maybe two car engines. So it's like <laughs> who would volunteer for that? Go ahead. But all of you did. <laughs> so um, and, and we got this TRG stuff. So people came and um, they worked, and what we had to do was basically, because um, we were already dug out, we had to fill all of these these the spiral kind of excavation with this TRG stone 
almost all the way to the top, so up until about three inches, because the stones were three to four inches. So basically do that. So that the stones wouldn't shift, you know, and, and heave during frost. It would give it a good foundation. And I, I want to mention some people who came. Let's see, we've got Heather, Nicole, John Sylvester, Reverend Black came, volunteer for the men's group, volunteers from the men's group in Mission Covenant Church, Kevin Price, Will Johnson was there, uh, Jed Richardson, Lynn and Corinne Chase, I'm sorry, Pat, Nina, Deb, raise your hand if you helped. I don't know, you know, there tons of people helped. <coughs> and uh, foremost was Richard Chase. Um, you can see the pack slide over here. Richard Chase, we all know him as sort of the stone magician. I don't know, whatever you want to call him. Stone, stone Man. Stone Man, is that what yeah. you call him? Stone yeah. Man? He has um, a song called Stone Man. Oh, yeah? That's okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Stone, stone uh, I don't know, Stone Wizard. I call him the yeah. Stone Dancer. He can do stone that Geek, whatever it's called. Yeah. <laughs> he can, um, do I have another shot of Richard? Oh, well, here's Richard. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, and, and I know, he gets them started early. He's doing one more, and maybe he's got one more. Ah, yeah. So he can take these stones, and they're, uh, they're humongous, and he can walk them from one side of the spiral to the other. I don't know how he misses all this stuff. Um, then he can turn them around, shift them perfectly in place, and then just lay them down, like, perfectly. I don't know how uh, he does that. So... Basically, he helped supervise, and um, poor Richard, I, I told him this about this in 2013, and he was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm going to do this, this, and he's like, oh, okay, whatever. He was really good-natured about it, and then I told him about it in 2014, and in 2015, I'm like, hey, Richard, remember I told you all this? Could you just come down for a few minutes and <laughs> show <laughs> <you> me? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, he wound up, like, supervising a great deal of this, and we couldn't have done it without him. Um, okay. So where are we? Oh, yeah, so like the bigger stones would, could be laid in place. They would nest right up against each other. But it was like putting together a really big puzzle because you get all the stones in, but then you have all these gaps in between. Mm -hmm. So you either have to find the stones that fit into those pieces, and a lot of volunteers did that. They found stones that would kind of fit in there. Yeah. Or Manuel and um, Richard actually had to shave some of the stones with chisels and hammers. Um, other slide. Uh, they've broken black, black, and some of the men's group um, putting some of the some of the uh, rocks down in place. What do we got next. Oh yeah, so this is where we were probably at the end of July, and these were the hottest days of the year. I mean, it was really brutal out there. Um, Will can tell you, right? Yeah, it was pretty hot, pretty <laughs> hot, and we had to drink like tons and tons of water. Yeah, we did, and Walmart donated wa donated the water. We could yeah, that was a very nice of them to do that. Um, anyway, so uh, once again, we got about this far, and Manuel and I continued to work on it for the rest of the summer. And occasionally, people would help us out, uh, but by the end of the summer, it was too cold to do the fine work. Because really, what needs to be done now is really fine work, so we had to put it for the winter, and then we got another slide for that. There you go. So I think this was October, November, man. Yeah. End, uh, end of October. Again, um, uh, Mission Covenant Church, the men's group, uh, came up and helped out um, to do, like, we had to rake it, and, and also Mark Scholl came up, right? Big shout out to Mark Scholl. Mm -hmm. um, had to, we had to rake yeah. the site. Um, we were supposed to get this dirt piles cleaned up, but I guess the, the town kind of ran out of money. But um, in any case, and just kind of put stones around the, 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 uh, the stone, uh, some TRG around the stones to keep them kind of neat for the, the winter. Um, and while we did this, you get another shot. Okay. And that's George, isn't it? Yeah, George, George Hunt. Yeah. yeah. Um, who is a really big help, too. So, um, while we were doing this, we were all talking about redevelopment, just not just in Orange, but in the area, <coughs> and um, and what we'd like to see, and talking about things in terms of hopefulness, um, and you know, a lot of the good things that have happened recently, and, and in my other presentation, I had a lot of slides of really good things that are happening in Orange lately. Um, but if we're honest, we have to take into account um, kind of those narratives, those narratives of decline that often dominate um, 
what happens on Facebook or when people say in the newspaper and things like that. Um, and if we're honest, also, uh, we have to admit that a lot of our social economy depends upon those narratives of decline, right? So we have treatment facilities now, and we have um, social services that deal with kind of the hardships that are in people's lives. So it's not surprising that people see negative things. Um, Orange and Apple are heavily invested in the narrative of decline, right? Um, but uh, what I was thinking was that some of the negativity that we experienced, most of what we experienced was overwhelmingly positive. And I want to get back to that in a minute. Um, but when people say something negative, it's almost paradoxical because um, I, I, I see it as sort of a self-defense mechanism to having been disappointed a lot. And so it's easier to sort of condemn something before it gets mm -hmm. going. Um, that way you protect yourself from being disappointed once again, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in a, a weird way, the negative things that people <coughs> say are kind of a validation of the spiral or the need for a spiral. Uh, da, da, da. And beyond, you know, like how we personally feel about things, there's the universal, and this happens to be the International Year of Jubilee, so the International Year of Forgiveness. And um, when I think about this spiral, I often think about it in terms of larger struggles in this area and how I reconcile myself to this place that I love and that I think is really beautiful. But by the same token, has kind of a kind of an intense colonial history, right? Um, and it's not surprising, um, you know, here we are, we're in hit by the church territory, right? But some of the worst things that happened in the Kingsville War during our period of colonization happened in our neighborhood, right? So Mary Rollinson was taken across the Millers River and uh, Deerfield, the Battle of uh, Massacre at uh, Turner's Falls, which isn't even on here, surprisingly, but the Bloody Brook Battle in, in Deerfield. And then, uh, what do I have next for a slide? Oh, okay. This is actually a spiral from pre-colonial times. Mm -hmm. So it's in Connecticut um, at, a, at a place called Guam like mm. that. Um, so, um, and there, there are spirals and things like this all over New England. It's just, mm. uh, they're in hidden spots and people don't talk about where they are, but they <laughs> pre-exist uh, pre uh, the colonial context area. But when I talk, when I think of it, I'm trying to, it's almost like I'm trying to reconcile that, what I love about it to the history that's gone before and how do you make sense of that and how do you, um, how does one come to terms with it in a way um, that helps us move forward? And so the spiral is kind of my little act of atonement. It's a little personal thing. You guys all participated in it, so you get you get credit for, for doing your penance. Um, <laughs> but but if, if we could just sort of experience that in a larger sense and maybe think about what it means for, like, beyond the personal, like a collective sort of act of forgiveness that we uh, express towards this landscape that we love and the environment that we have to live in. Yes. <laughs> so here we are again. Um, and this is about where we are right now, by the way. <laughs> Come April and May, we will have spots on the spiral to, uh, for anybody who wants to get in there and, and move some stones around. I think we're a little bit further than this, maybe? We're a lot further than that. We're a lot further than that? Yeah. Well, that's good to yeah. know. The, I think you the might spiral at this point is there are stones yeah, you're right. in, in, uh, touching contiguously all the way wow. to, from the beginning to the end. <laughs> um, there are spots that like, uh, like here, sort of. well I think that's filled a, a little bit to the, to the left mm -hmm. and move to the next spot. That like, left? Nope. A little bit down. There, that spot right there. These Those people? are the kind of spots that need to be filled. So you got a rock like that? They need to be <laughs> the rocks need to be shaped. <laughs> so the ro a, yeah. a, a rock that's a little bit bigger than that size needs to be shaped to fit in. And, and, and that's a very mm -hmm. time consuming thing. Mm. You're right. We're a lot further than this. Mm -hmm. It's much yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is in the summertime. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I didn't have any pictures of I could probably get up there. Yeah, the fall we look further along. Okay. All right. Well, if you had my other presentation, you would have seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can go to the last thing. All right. So. Um,
um, this is, I guess, um, just some questions that I've been thinking about, um, and, uh, and they're not all on there, but I can read them for you. And maybe they can be a starting point for some conversation if people feel like conversing. So how can the town get past all of the negative sentiments from outside and within, sometimes it's even worse from people within, and build, an off, build authentic momentum for renewal? So if we want to renew this town, how do we get past kind of the negative back baggage that we're, we're stuck with? How can we go beyond <laughs> pragmatic short-term plans to build something lasting? And that's the question that I keep asking myself. You know, the, the spiral should last through a nuclear blast. You know, it should <laughs> last through Maybe an earthquake, but you know it can't withstand uh, you know, a bulldozer. But it, it, it should last. That's why I chose stone. But so, how do we get past that kind of sense that everything that we have to do has to be short term? Like when we built the bridge and we wanted to put up nice um, dividers in it, and we had to go for kind of what was cheaper, you know, less expensive. And the other thing is, what do we do to actually occupy our in environment, <coughs> ensuring it's um, health, security, and intactness. Could you go back to those other slides? Which one? Two back to the Gualam Mump or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So the people who were here before, these structures are all over New England, they had a better sense of how to occupy their landscape so that it actually belonged to them, so that um, the things that they built really were sustained and lasting. <coughs> and unlike a lot of the things that we're kind of building, or even the projects plans for the park that maybe didn't come through. So you can go back to the question thing. And I'll just leave those up there if people want to talk about any of this or if people talk, want to talk about anything that they want to talk about. Too. Yeah, I actually have a question because I've been part of this process at all. So you've heard often to this sort of negative environment that you've tried to accomplish this thing. Was that in like public meetings where people were being oppositional or just sort of online grousing? What what actually, was there specific things that took place to try to prevent this from happening? Um, it didn't try to prevent it from happening. I think, maybe Manuel, you want to speak to this too. Um, you, were, you were always telling me what was negative on Facebook. I don't read Facebook. Um, so the social media. Some of it happens, there is kind of a yeah. piece on social media that gets a little negative sometimes. But I think more than that, it got wrapped up into, um, just let that go. <laughs> Did I make it happen? <laughs> so um, there was a lot of disgruntledness, shall we say, about the park itself. Um, and some of this kind of was overflow from people's unhappiness about that park. And there was a lot of misunderstanding about the park, too. But the park didn't really get uh, built as it was proposed to be built. And people thought that some of the money was missing on that, and so they thought that the spiral was part of that. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, there was nothing organized? It's just informal complaints. Oh no, nobody okay. tried to get right. the spiral taken down. Okay. Just it was just no. a lot yeah, of... Yeah, a lot of, a lot of um, comments, negative comments on, not a lot, but some negative comments on Facebook. Um, people would come up to the site while we were working and say things like, you know, forgiveness, you know, what, why are you doing something about forgiveness? Forgiveness is for church, you know, <laughs> it's only for Sundays and, and, and while you're at church. You know, that's, that's a real comment that somebody <laughs> makes, yeah. you know, that made to us, you know. about the money spent. Yeah, you know, and, and we had to emphasize that, you know, there was a small amount of grant money um, that was put towards this, but 99% was just the sweat of volunteers. Mm -hmm. You know, and it didn't come from taxes or no, grants. Well, grant money from the state, it does, sort of, yeah, yeah, you know, it does come from the, ta the taxpayers, but not from the taxpayers of Orange, per se. But for everyone like that, there was a fellow who just was here in Orange, <laughs> he was visiting family, he was from New Jersey, he woke up in the morning, and he was a young man, and he came up and he was like, this is great, I wish they did this in my town, and he spent the whole day lifting, <coughs> So there were twice as many good things that happened, and I probably shouldn't focus on the negativity, except that um, if we want to do more projects that fall outside of the scope of, you know, fixing the sewer system, then it has to be justified with a different logic. 
Well, is there a way to involve and make those people feel invited and engage them in ways that they... Trust me, we asked every single one. Anybody who would come up to the site, you would ask them to help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a solution, Sam? No, no, I don't have a solution. I just have more continuing mm -hmm. philosophical thought. But I heard someone say, like, thank you so much. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> So I get just three comments. I mean, first, I'm just so happy to hear the enthusiasm you have. And, you know, our dream when we, we, we thought about this project up was that someone would get excited and get into it, you know, as you have and sort of wrestle with this stuff. So that's wonderful to see. The second thing, comment was what, sort of what Deb said, I hadn't thought, but, you know, we held a, uh, we did a, a workshop during Martin Luther King Day and we had people talk about, we actually had people write essays first uh, about times when they had either been forgiven or not forgave, uh, did not forgive someone and what that meant. And those are very, I gather, those are very moving. And then we had a workshop when people said, uh, and actually said, I'm telling a story that I've never told anyone. Some people cried. It was a very emotional time. So cl it's clearly f when you do or don't succeed at this issue of forgiveness, it's a, it's a big thing because it's about often your most important relationships. And then thirdly, simply, you know, in terms of, I mean, the hands theory of change is, you know, this momentum for, we often dry, uh, 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 draw upward spirals that get, um, that get uh, fueled by trust. You know, tr when you have trust, like when, from doing things like building gardens together or uh, being a mentor, anything that brings people together across differences to do something that's simpler 
and there's trust, then when you get to that more controversial stuff that often has to do with money, uh, you tend to give people more of a benefit of the doubt. Right. And this kind of bad feelings tends to be, it doesn't get rid of them, but uh, it tends to be a lot less. And, 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 and the, the whole idea of the, forg- we, we began by thinking a lot about trust, you know, social capital, but then we said, what are the things that build trust? What are the other things like empathy, like forgiveness? What are those other things that uh, foster trust? And then how can we get people thinking about them? So this was the first attempt to look at one particular value, value of forgiveness, and say, how can we get people to uh, wonder about that and maybe act on it in a different way or a more intense way? So it's all very exciting. And, um, I was in on some of the first meetings where Hans was discussing uh, the, um, having an art competition, which Mary won. And I think what we loved about your vision, Mary, was that it could become a place where people could go, like a sanctuary. And if you were really troubled, you could go there to sort of uh, contemplate, you know, and really think about what was going on in yourself. And I think this could be a wonderful place to go. I think that what would be really nice is if you could have sort of informational articles about in the paper, offering it to the community once, you know, that it's still in process, we'd like your help. It didn't, it was really just a teeny grant that you got, all volunteer labor, so that a lot of the misinformation might, uh, you know, be more explained. Mm -hmm. And and I don't want it to be, you know, like I'm feeling sour about this at all. I think that as, as many people have said, forgiveness is part of what we need to go through to be able to do the positive things that we need to do, the positive work. And so in some sense, I, I think it's good that it brings out a little disgruntledness. There's a lot of reason to be disgruntled. So uh, especially in Orange these days, you know, the factory closed, it's, it's hard. So I think that's okay. Um, it's part of what it's supposed to do. Uh, The other part of it is inspiring people to get involved. And I think this is just a personal philosophy, but I think you can have all the grant money in the world, but the real inspirational change comes from local grassroots visions, people who really understand their place. And and then those people who take the action, I know that to happen in Orange, years, right? The best things in Orange has been started by citizen volunteers. All volunteer labor. labor. So um, that labor builds on other labor and people get involved in it. And um, and I think that we're in a little bit of a standstill right now in Orange because there's not a huge understanding about that maybe in some parts of town government. Um, but uh, but that's, that's really, that's the fuel that fuels Orange. You know, I think in like five years, it's going to be a favorite spot. Mm-hmm. We're also going to plant some plants in there. I was thinking some of that um, ground flax that mm-hmm. spreads and maybe mm-hmm. could fill it out and make it like, you got some? Yeah, plenty of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm all over that. <laughs> I'm plant it a little bit. Time. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. It's not part of the anymore. Mm-hmm. Because people, you know, I know that the town can't maintain anything. That was the other thing for permanent stones in the ground, no kids are going to come out. In the original design, we had a space in the middle where people could deposit little rocks and they could walk the spiral and put down whatever they were carrying. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the kids picked those up again and started rolling them down the hill. So we're, That's we're part of it. Yeah, <laughs> here's your forgiveness. So they were using it to bowl and things like that, which was a problem for the people who had to mow in the park. But, um, but we were hoping that it wouldn't have any maintenance at all, really we got a ground cover in there, then um, we would just mow around it. Mm-hmm. So two, three things, okay? So, do you want to ask? I just had a question. Um, it is on a hill. Is there, like, a path going up the hill, or do you just, you just walk ahead? Yeah. Well, originally, yeah. 
and they kind of ran out a little bit of their funding for the town. So we're hoping that they'll get a little bit more to be able to make the path that they were going to make. Because the original was going to come up and go through the other side and down into the park. And that would be really nice. Run. I remember hearing a comment about I don't know if it's on there, but yeah. originally well, that was what I was working, those were the plans I was working with. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you gotta go, oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah, no, so yeah, you're right. So originally um, they were gonna be capped all the way through oh, here. Right. It was gonna be, um, and also on this side too. So. Mm -hmm. Are there benches? There are no benches, but no, we are, not we, if there's leftover stone, we're thinking about leftover stone. So there were two other comments. I think Claudia and Mark, did you? Just one proposal or idea. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, part of the original uh, idea or vision was that, you know, in the same, in, in it could be a Catholic religion or pro right. they'll have a pilgrimage. So that you have a, 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 a between shrines of different kinds that embodies it. So our idea was sort of, well, you want a sec, you want to have a secular pilgrimage pilgrimage around secular values that are universal that cut across all religions that you can take kids to. Um, so this was meant to be the first one. You And the idea is again that these, the momentum of these kinds of things would generate. So maybe, you know, and I know the Mission Covenant <coughs> Church had a lot of energy and still yeah. does and I just talked to uh, George Hunt who's, uh, that, you know, maybe you or the town and them but putting out the proposal for other kinds of, you know, asking the question, what are the driving values that help build trust, bring us together so we have more capacity, collaborate, and, you know, trying to make that maybe an ongoing kind of uh, series of projects. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I mean, I have found the community in general, uh, which I think is just tremendously successful in terms of being, I can't imagine a more collaborative place, though it needs to be even more. Uh, it's been tremendously successful at, uh, or enthusiastic about all of this stuff. That's the one thing I learned more than anything. Mm -hmm. People like this idea of going deep into what makes our relationships work. Yeah, and I think um, that perspective is, we have to keep that in mind. That was what that young man sort of brings it back to. Us. You guys are so lucky to be even doing this. That young man from New Jersey who came up to help us mm -hmm. was just inconceivable in his community. So. So that we have to keep that in mind, but yes, I agree. And, and we may have like a little ceremony there on mm -hmm. Martin Luther King's actual birthday in April. Mm -hmm. That would be great. It's a little warmer you can get up there. But I agree, it would be really, really nice to at least have one path up. I know that they have three coming up there, just one would be nice. Because it was meant to, we designed it to be wheelchair accessible. Yeah, I remember you mentioned it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so yeah. it was kind of, that was a little bit of a just like that. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, you use the energy and momentum of the kids who want to bring stuff in and pitch it down the hill, but <laughs> turn it into something like a little bowl of seed bombs or some like little lumps of suet bird seed so that, sure. you know, they can have, it's okay to touch it, you know, like there's no like, no, no, don't show that because it's actually kind of encouraged in a way. Right. So the pine cones maybe or something, there's something, a lot of pine cones. Yeah, that the, the lawnmower guys won't be bothered by it. Yeah, exactly. Pine cones would be good because I w so I was wondering when you said that the flag was removed, if there was feeling about having it removed, because I think that, I, I don't know, personally, I would think that uh, it would be nice to have it replaced. Okay. It was supposed to replace it. Where were they supposed to put it? Right here? Yeah. I thought that, see where, at the very tip of the, I thought they were going to put it at uh, that little point. The little yeah. point in the park. At the oh, over here, that four? No, 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 no. It's the very tip of the park. It's your point. It's River Street. Come He's way up. Way up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. There yeah. you go, right there. Right, That's where maybe. I, thought I don't know. Place. Uh, I would, yeah, yeah, I must say that Ruth and I were both a little, uh, and not your fault, I think it, in the rush of things and the town mm -hmm. was disorganized. Because, I mean, uh, you know, I, I know at a Lions meeting, for example, 
uh, I would think. They had a lot of griping to do over that flag. So, and, and, and you know, the flag, uh, yeah, it's, an import, it's a, a tremendously important symbol to, uh, to me and to a lot of people. And, uh, um, and some somehow people addressing might, some that. Some people might want it back up on the hill. Actually. I, they may want it in the middle of the spiral, but I'll mm-hmm. tell you, that flag was in very bad shape. I guess I, 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 I didn't g- put a new flag there. But on another part of the hill. I think it would warrant, it might warrant, um, and, and, and might create some good energy just to sort of think in some formal way with uh, some people mm-hmm. about how to address that and then communicate that mm-hmm. to other people. Because you know what, things with the flag tend to be very, they very they long lasting. Yeah. And I think a lot of times when people came criticism. up to the top of the hill to talk to us about that and we had to make clear to them that it was not our decision to right. take the flag that, to take the pole down. It wasn't even you our know, decision to be We either. didn't, that, that was not our, the site that we had put the, uh, had staked out before they said, no, sorry, it was right. right there. We had already staked it out, you know, <laughs> and then they told us that we had to pull off the stakes and, and go to the top of the hill. So it was no place course, that was eight months later, then they yeah. got the flag. Yeah, it's not a, cri- no criticism. No. I'd be happy at some point if you wanted to talk with Kevin Kennedy, because I think sure. he, it, 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 Well, it was uh, ultimately Kevin's decision to put it up. Yeah, and I, th- I think it uh, might warrant a further discussion. It does. I think Josh may have had an ulterior motive. He may have wanted to get rid of that mm. flag because um, it was in bad shape and because his workers couldn't get up there. It was really a, a hard thing for them to do. And so I served that purpose really well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that corner space up top. It could be maybe even a small memorial and make it right there so it's a prominent. Because yeah. honestly, I, I never even noticed the flag there. It's like so it was so I, it was I like the idea of it being more that But entrance, I think so the thing is that it. if people, if, there, if, if the flag was really meaning, it was really meaningful for people to have a flag there. I think that those people's feelings should be, re- I mean, it should be at least sure. brought up and, and a discussion brought up. Because if it was a bureaucratic decision that had nothing to do with you, but you're sort of you taking the brunt of yeah. that. The negative feeling about it is, you know. Well, I, I think know. it would have been lessened if they actually did what they were supposed to do, which was to put it in here and they were going to have monuments in here around it, mm-hmm. and it was going to be like mm-hmm. ceremony connected to that, mm-hmm. and, and people could access it, but that never happened, unfortunately. Right. The well, money ran out. So. Yeah, well, I mean, they barely finished the ballpark. So yeah, they spent all their money over there. They spent all their money on that ballpark. And again, having said that, you guys were heroic. I used to call Mary when I was up there. She, she'd be out there in the rain with this, like, I call her a Bolivian tin miner because <laughs> she had this hat in this, like, cold. Uh, you guys were heroic at get, getting this thing now you know to, why there's no pictures of to, where, <laughs> to where it is. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, these are just some of the details, too. I think people are going to love it after a while. You know? I think the a great location. It, it will be very nice when all that plant life grows. Oh, down. fantastic. It, it was. It was turning a bed of flowers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think it's interesting juxtaposition. You know, I'm, I'm making assumptions about this, but I'm wondering about the um, indigenous spiral that you showed, that very beautiful spiral. You know, my guess is, is that that didn't happen with select board meetings. <laughs> <laughs> you know? really? And, you know, there was more, yeah. there was Perhaps, you more know, organic. ceremony, there was more time, there was a timeline on it, maybe, you know, we waited till the, like, you know, the, the stars were in the right place. I mean, who knows, right? But it, it is interesting when we try and create ceremony in places and the construct of a more, of this sort of, you know, a, a very different way of, of, of society functioning. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we should still do it, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But, you know, we have to grapple with
So what's so, over there? Yeah. There's the town bar and there's some sand pits. Oh, and there's right the right basketball court. Okay. Okay. But they were gonna just make a really it beautiful. It was gonna be an like orchard. It was gonna be an orchard. Oh, Not right. an orchard, but a, um, a tree farm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hmm. And you know these are really lovely plants that you yeah. put Kevin put together. I, I wish that they came about, and they still can come about. And and part of that um, that you're, what you're talking yeah. about is um, making sort of um, getting some communication with me. No, it's still there. It's right here. So it's been there for a long time. Um, it's been there about 15 years. But anyway, we want to have that inscribed in stone up there. And it's going to cost about $600. So we're going to raise, what, about three of that? About $490. So we're going to have $600. And not just to look at the plane. I think that's a fantastic idea. What do you think?